Now, let's get into the portion of the show, uh, local news, where we're going to talk about missing. Now, these are some very, very interesting missing stories. So the first story that I have, um, and I also wanted to just, you know, I touch on a bunch of stories, different cultures, different backgrounds, different, you know, everything. So this, I'm not all about, you know, just finding stories that might support just one community or just like woe to the people. I want to talk about everything because I feel like all crime stories in some way, shape or form are connected. And if you can learn one thing from one situation, you can always apply it to another similar situation. So that's why I always like to talk about everything. It's best for us just to know what is going on and how can we prevent it. So in this first one, we have a Naomi Irian. Now, this story is really, really sad, you all. Really, really sad. And I really wanted to bring it up because many of us, you know, could be in this situation. So young woman, um, young woman was abducted at about on March 12th as she was waiting in her car at a Walmart parking lot for a shuttle to her job at Panasonic. So listen to this, y'all. So last week, the teenager, this girl, she was pulled, she pulled into the parking lot around 5 a.m. and she spent time on social media from about 5.09 a.m. to about 5.23 a.m. And then a man authorities describe as lurking in the parking approached her vehicle and got in around 524 a.m. The vehicle then drove out of the parking lot a minute later. Her car was found abandoned three days later next to a Sherwin Williams paint store. Her brother said he saw surveillance footage from that morning, which showed a man wearing a mask and hoodie circling her car. Maybe he was to make sure there were no witnesses before he got into her driver's seat. So my question was, now how he going, if she's sitting in her driver's seat, how does he get around, open the door, get in her driver's seat and drive off? Well, they're saying he came up behind the car and forced his way into the driver's side of the car. Maybe her door was unlocked. He either said or did something to make her move to the passenger seat. And then he drove her car away to an unknown direction. Um, so he was later taken into custody, um, and he's expected to be arraigned on Wednesday. Um, they were able to uh, apprehend him. However, she is yet to be found. So her iPhone as well is missing as well. So he's currently being held on bail, $750,000, and they're asking anyone for any information about where she may be to call the local authorities. Poor woman just pulling into a Walmart for her job to do her job to catch the shuttle, something she's done all the time. You got to remember, you know, when you do routine, routine things that involve other entities, for example, she's going to work. So that involves her driving to Walmart, parking her car, waiting for the shuttle 5 a.m. in the morning, especially, you know, it's dark or maybe darker or lighter. Um, people are watching you. And so this man must have been watching her. He got in the car took off. Now, you know, I'm praying that they find her alive and safe, but we know how these stories typically end. Um, you, So, you know, I don't want to say rest in peace or anything like that. I just want to send my condolences to the family. I hope you find this young woman and I hope anybody else who may do something similar where you're going to work and you may park somewhere or you may take some route, you know, every other couple of days, take a different route. Or I do the same thing with my dog when I walk. And we never walk the same route every day. So we got four different routes and I just, I switch my routes. That's just a safety precaution because you never know what fuck ass is watching you. You know, our most vulnerable populations. And they may try to attack and apprehend you. This lady didn't think she was going to lose her life the day she's going to work. You know, so it's very, very sad. It was very sad to me. I saw it and I said, oh, wow. Now, you know, you, no one will know where she's at. The 12-year-old should have known better than to be playing with a gun. 
you know what, Catherine? And then you know what got me the most was that you know the 12 year old didn't know knew didn't know that she shouldn't have been playing with it because of the way she picked it back up was literally her thumb on the trigger with it facing her. Like she thought she was picking it up, like you know, and pointing it the other way. She literally picked it up with her thumb on the trigger and it facing her. It's like, wow, you really, you really are too young to be handling something like that. Will Smith is a hero that says it all. You okay, B1? I get what you're saying in that comment. I get what you're saying in that comment. For those who are just coming in the room, if you didn't hear um, early at the top of the show, we already have lawyers using Will Smith's defense, his slap as their defense in their case. Red ball it back, but listen. When you say Will Smith is a hero, trust me, I get you, and and that says it all. Stepfather, I'm sad and embarrassed by some of these mothers. I agree, a lot of these women shouldn't. Good morning, by the way. What? Where are people getting all this fentanyl from? Come to find out, it wasn't even real fentanyl. This man making fake fentanyl opioids in his house, which is even worse because he's dealing with other chemicals that shouldn't even be consumed by human human the body. You know what I mean? So. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? But I think it's our community's fault for claiming music as a part of our culture when we don't control it. That's true. There, that's true. I mean, and then you got to think how far of how how much of the music are you consuming? Are you just listening for a listening pleasure, or are you actually consuming this to change and identify your lifestyle? Like, am I listening to a song to then go out and make some kind of change, or am I listening to a song in this moment to celebrate whatever I'm doing? And I think people get that distorted. You hear somebody in a song tell, talk about what they're going through or their love story or something, and then you automatically say, I need that, or I'm, I, you know, I need to be in that place. Well, it don't work like that, but some people don't have that illusion break off. They, you know, they have to be dreamy with it, you know, they little nods with it. The new drug here in Philadelphia is Trank. Is that horse tranquilizers? Because I heard this girl was telling me and my friend, we went to her house to have dinner. And she was telling us a story about her friend. She said her friend uses horse tranquilizers. And I said, excuse me? So is that what you're talking about? Because I know I heard about that shit. That's some new shit. That part, we don't control it, but they still allow themselves to be used as a destructive weapon in our community. And we support it because we want to see our people do great. It's all chaos. Yeah, it is. And we need the conversations, though. We don't have those kind of health, healthy conversations on TV enough, you know, or in the media enough. And when we do, I'm not going to lie, they're they're boring. They're not, they don't hit the nail on the head. You want to get someone like Tyler Perry to come in and have the conversation or someone, you know, Oprah, you know, great. But that's the, those aren't the folks we want to see having those conversations. It's not appealing to the generation. You need someone on their level who understands and gets it to have that conversation with them. And I think it's laziness. And I think a lack of effort is as to the reason why we don't really have that kind of artist who is interested in, you know, having those conversations on a on a on a grandioser scale. It's funny because you have celebrities who came out and said, I'm not doing drugs no more. But like future, I don't you know, he said he didn't do he's not drinking no more. But now he has music out saying I was doing good when I was drinking. Maybe I should go back. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you have all of these different things that influence the children in their minds it's someone who knew a routine absolutely so sad yes you have to change it up a bit okay ain't no way you get me i learned that too much while i'm serious women get protection and keep alert yes definitely switch up he's been stalking that parking lot i hope they find i do too i said the same thing i said all this lady was doing was going to her fucking job all she was doing and then you asshole right i agree you can't be a creature of habit you have to switch up and can't let people know your every move because you're on a regular schedule they will follow you yep so many distractions i'm also saying that they glorifying black violence and ignorance by making will smith a hero that's why exactly what i said and there was so many media outlets who didn't want to say nothing bad about will smith and so they you know they was their topics was stuff like you know what is alopecia <laughs> is it insensitive to talk about it and it's like uh okay great angle what the fuck is wrong people they trying to get high high <laughs> okay <laughs> music is a form of programming for that reason i limit the type of music that is played in my home my tt used to do that too she took my brother lil kim album when she had her breast out 
She said, give me that album. She took it right from him. I said, well, what the hell? The fuck? Why can't people just 420 and chill? Yeah. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> yes. When I tell you, that whole conversation she was telling me about tranquilizer has been out for two years here in Philadelphia. Yes, it's mixed with horse tranquilizer. What is wrong with people? Horse tranquilizers? You trying to be dead. <laughs> you trying to be dead. <laughs> Yo, I thought he should have said something after his baby mom was killed at a bowling alley. You know, he ain't going to say nothing. And now they're saying that her death may be tied to his gang affiliations, which we'll talk about on Friday. But what? Um, Good morning. Good morning, Red Wings Hockey. Thank you for being here. Thank you all for coming through. So the next, now the next missing story case. And so to wrap this up, I hope they find her body. Um, The man is being held on bail. Um, but I do hope they find her body. And I was waiting to see if her job was going to release a statement, condolences or something like that. You know, just something to smooth it over because she was on her way to work, but nothing yet. Um, so now the next story really, really sad is Tanisha Griffiths. So this young lady, um, her body was found um, recently. So the body of a missing Tampa area mom was found late last week in a remote state forest well outside the city. And so what they're saying happened was, according to her family, she had finished her shift with Amazon and returned to her home around 3 p.m. on Friday, March 18th. As previously reported by the Times, she texted with her father sometime on Friday evening, but her family grew concerned after friends reached out via Facebook on Saturday to say the young mom was a no-show at a previously scheduled event. She also failed to answer any further text messages or call her 12-year-old daughter who was staying with her mother, an unusual move that her family particularly concerned for her well-being. She didn't respond to a group text on Monday, which is when the family reported her missing and failed to show up to work on Tuesday. And so they're saying that um, the, Pasco, the Pasco County Sheriff's Office confirmed her death on Sunday evening with the permission of their family. Um, they don't they're not going to disclose any information as to the death of her. But what they're saying is, is that someone called around 1 30 p.m. on Thursday of last week about a body found near the southeast side of wildlife management area. The area where her body was discovered is about 50 miles northeast of Tampa, where she was reported missing. The body was subsequently identified as Griffith. And they're still searching for her white 2008 Nissan Altima. So sad. And um, did I put the picture up of her? Oh, let me put the picture up of this, this woman. So sad. Here we are. Another one. Another woman. Home from work. So between her getting home from work and she loses contact with her family. Again, to me, it sounds like someone who knows her. Someone who's familiar with her routine. Um someone close to her i'm waiting for more details to come out y'all know you know i always say where were the signs because the first thing i'm gonna ask is who were her lovers who was the, her significant other boyfriend you know i don't know what her situation was where are they what do they have to say about this because i find it very very ironic that once she got home it wasn't while she was out you know it was once you got home to your who goes specifically to your house unless someone knows it's you. So it's very sad, very, very sad. Mother of 12, of a 12 year old. And it's, you know, all these, everybody's trying to do their right thing and live their life. Um, when you get horse tranquilizers from in the first place, baby, you going, I mean, are you going to the vet? Like, how are we doing this shit? Listen to Tim Blaine, but <laughs> Also do a regular walk around the exterior of your home. Check that the windows and doors haven't been tampered with. I do it every once in a while. That's a very good point. Yep, I agree. I think that slap was staged. Chris Rock ticket sales are up 800% and all of his shows are sold out. I was telling him this morning about that show, about him being sold out. The drummer Keith Moon for the band The Who passed out on stage at a rock show. Horse tranquilizers caused him to pass out in the middle of a song. I mean, it's in the title, horse tranquilizers. They take, they knock a fucking horse out. What, 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 what are you doing? What are you, your risk? Your people are playing with their lives. 
they're playing with their lives. They're playing with their lives. All these missing women is crazy to me. I've been following Alexis Ware, missing person. She just vanished. Oh, let me put that there. Alexis Ware. It's shocking to me. Oh, you know, I find it so interesting about these missing folks is that these one, you know, when people are doing their regular, 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 and they end up missing. To me, in my mind, I always suspect foul play, um, something personal, someone close to them. So I read these two stories in particular. I'm like, you got one sitting at Walmart waiting for her ride, the shuttle. Then you got one coming home straight from Amazon. That is that is really, really weird. That sounds way too familiar to me. Um, so I'll stay tuned to that. All right. And then the in the last missing story, oh, it's coming out of Chicago. We have a transgender woman who was found slain in the trash can now this was very very um it was very hurtful to, to just hear the details of this story but we got to talk about it we really got to talk about it so what they're saying it happened is is that police are investigating the apparent murder of a transgender woman who had been reported missing before her body was found in an alley by garbage workers so they're saying that Tatiana LaBelle was found beaten to death in an alley near the intersections of South Ingleside Avenue and 84th Street shortly before 1 p.m. on Friday. The Chicago woman had been reported missing by her family five days earlier. And so once the garbage people pulled it up and the garbage flipped over and everything fell out, a neighbor who wasn't identified, um, says a neighbor who wasn't identified, investigators released little information regarding the woman's death they haven't officially identified LaBelle and no arrests have been made. Detectives are still investigating um, this as, you know, of course, a homicide. The, 30, the slain 33-year-old family, however, confirmed her death. Her family is now begging for an arrest to be made. The way in which she was brutally murdered is so heinous that there is no way we can reactively just say something. We have to become more proactive. Dr. LaShawn Latrice of Black Lives Matter, Women of Faith. Um, just some, you know, LaBelle's death marks the seventh known murder of a transgender person in the U.S. so far this year, according to the Human Rights Campaign. You know, and that's still way too many. So I thought this was interesting that the fact that they found, she, you know, the only way she was found was in a garbage can, you know, the, the garbage can. She had been reported missing by her family five days earlier you know, um, and again, we have to pay attention to these stories because when it's particularly to transgender women, you know, police, law enforcement, detectives, they like to drag their feet sometimes. Um, they like to placate that it could have been out of sex work. They like to placate all of those things instead of actually taking um, taking the time to do the do detective work. So they said, of course, no arrests have been made, no information about, you know, the death, the autops autopsy, all of that stuff has not been released to the public. So what I'm going to do is pay attention to this story. I want to make sure that um, whoever the perpetrator of this murder is definitely ca caught because it sounds to me like in the manner of which the body was disposed that they didn't care. Like this wasn't, you know, this was somebody who wanted to just rid someone of their life and so makes me believe that it's somebody close to them foul play maybe a lover um but we're going to find more details of the story and this kind of stuff happens all the time it's just that you know we rarely get to hear about a lot of these stories um yeah yes king grandma i would love your take on lexus where yes I'm, i definitely just wrote it down like definitely got to pull that one up there's a war on biological women this is crazy. It's like we are being hunted. Yeah. The Alex Square case is crazy as fuck. I don't care if you feel tricked. You don't get to kill somebody. You don't. You don't get to kill somebody. People are so cruel. Because they have family. Everybody has family. Everybody belongs to something, you know? Why is the LGBTQ not being light to this? I wonder they only speak up on things like cancel David Chappelle. We're the outcry. Oh, of course. Of course, you know. Of course, that's what it is. All the twist and plot twists. Yeah, I'm I'm am I'm gonna do something. I might just do a little video on that. My thing is there is no need to murder these transvestite who think they're women or men. Stop the DL killings. Yeah, all of the killings associated with you know transgenders, either male or women, you know, 
definitely need to be investigated and considered in the same light of any other homicide in my mind. You know, that's a regular person. That could be your brother, your sister. That could be your friend, your coworker. You know, no one deserves to be gone because simply because of how they choose to live their life. No judging this morning. Okay, tell them, Coco. You, I'm looking, I'm reading. I see my prayers to these women, families, and loved ones handled like trash. Pitiful. I agree with you, and we need to speak out for the most vulnerable of our community, and that includes trans and gay people in the black community. All right, are we all putting our fists up in the air this morning? Okay, that's for everybody. Stop the killings, period. So her name was Tatiana LaBelle. And again, you know, I'm going to stay tuned to this. I'm definitely going to look into the Alexis Ware story. I might do an upload video today on that. Thank you for bringing that up. I love when y'all do that because I'd be so geeked to like do to go find what is our homework. The homework is to answer why don't drunk drivers get hurt in accidents as much as the people they hurt. And so I'm doing, I'm going to do my research to figure it out. So y'all got to come. That's going to be for next Wednesday, but y'all got to come with why y'all think it is. Cause that is a fascinating question. Why is it? So I, somebody says because their muscles is relaxed, but the car must, the car ain't relaxed. The car still, <laughs> is it cause they got control? I don't know. I don't know, but that's what we got to figure out for next week. And then, um, so join me next uh, or join me on Friday, y'all, at 6.30 a.m., where we're going to do hot topics and celebrity um, news. And until next time, you all, thank you so much for being here. Until next time, deuces.